Now let's go. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm your host Isaiah, as always. And today, we're going to be predicting week 2 of the 2022-2023 NFL season. Yes. This is going this week 1 was crazy. Week 2 is probably going to be insane. Let's get into it. Okay. So I'm not 100% sure how this week goes in order, but I know it's opening it off. It's um Chargers going into Kansas City. This game should be a really good game. Mahomes is coming off an insane game. So is Herbert. Each combining for a combined total of eight touchdowns and zero interceptions. So yeah, this is going to be a shootout between two really good quarterbacks. These two teams met last year twice, and both games were insane. But I think in their first matchup, I'm going to take the Chiefs and Arrowhead. One of the hardest places to play. But in a high scoring close game. Close game, giving the Chiefs 31 34. All right, moving on, we got the Steelers. The Steelers hosting New England Patriots. New England is coming off a loss to my Dolphins. And the offense did not look great. It's almost like when you have Matt Patricia calling plays, you don't have a good offense. Crazy, I know. Steelers are coming off a very good win against the Bengals, but there are so many questions on that Steelers offense. I don't think either of these offenses are good. It's going to come down to the defense. But I'm gonna take Pittsburgh in a slight in a slight game. Give me twenty twenty not to negative one. Give me a give me a twenty to seven ball game. You know, no. Give me a twenty to ten ball game. Pittsburgh wins. I'm next we got the Hol the Holts. The Colts going into Jacksonville to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville actually looked really good against the commanders, but Trevor Lawrence is really giving me Detroit Matthew Stafford vibes. Very talented but just hasn't been able to get the job done. And the Colts are coming off a tie. This is by far the worst division in football. But with all with all that said, Colts haven't beat Jacksonville on the road since 2014. I don't think that that changes at all. I actually do think that this game's going to be a bit of a blowout. 23-14. I said a bit of a blowout. It's a two-possession game. 23-14. Jacksonville gets the win. I wasn't very impressed by Matt Ryan. Up next, we got the Browns going into... New no, I'm next. We got the Jets, the New Jersey Football Jets, going into into the dog pound for Cleveland's first home game of the season, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I was right. Cleveland's first home game of the season. But um, I wasn't impressed by either of these teams. Yes, the Browns won. I know. Hooray! Congratulations. They won with pure luck, and that was definitely intentional grounding call. If there's going to be a game that Jets win in this hard stretch, it's definitely going to be this one. But I'm still going to take the Browns to start off the season 2-0. and Not a great 2-0 and team, but they'll win 24-13 they'll win, they'll win clearly because of that defense. Up next, we got my Dolphins heading into Baltimore. Two 1-0 and teams going duking it out. Mm -mm. Um, This is going to be an interesting game. I expect to see a lot of blitzes, a lot of cover zero, like we ran against Baltimore last year. And it's going to be interesting. I do like the Ravens secondary a lot this year. So how is Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle going to do? Is Mike Kosicki going to get more involved? We'll be able to get a run game. So many questions. I feel like we can easily stop their very lackluster receiving core, but how are we going to handle their run game? We There were multiple times in the Patriots game where I'm just questioning what are their run defense doing? On the Ravens side, there's a lot of questions as well. How are their receivers going to match up against Xavier Howard and Nick Neham, one of the best cornerback duos in the league? I don't care if Byron Jones isn't there. Nick Neham is still a decent corner. How will the Miami be able to still run cover zero? All, all that, all that. Will Melvin Ingram continue to be an impact player? I'm going to take Baltimore though, in a somewhat close game. Give me a 23. Give me a 23-16 game as Miami goes to 1-1. One one. Up next, we got the Denver Broncos going into... Um, the Houston Texans going into Denver. Denver, you're not allowed to lose this game. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Houston's one of the worst teams in the league. I'll give them a 30-13 to 13 win. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt, Denver. If you lose this game, though, we're going to have a real... We're going to have a real conversation. Next, we got Buffalo hosting Tennessee. Tennessee looked really bad on the offensive side. And to be honest, the defense let Saquon Barkley run all over them, which they, ma they made Saquon come back and emerged a beast that we do not want to see if you're the opposing him. I like to see that Saquon Barkley's back. How will they fare up against, like, Josh Allen in that defense? Absolutely. I don't think they're going to have a good matchup. I know Tennessee tends to have 
tends to have good tends to have good matchups when it comes to Buffalo, but I have a 35-20 game and the score is going to be closer than what it says. I think Buffalo is going to come out this game, probably take a 21 zip lead and not look back. Um, next, we got the Arizona Cardinals heading into Vegas to take on the Las Vegas Raiders. Vegas definitely showed some struggles on the offensive side. It, it wasn't Devontae Adams. It was in, um, why am I blanking here? It was on Derek Carr and the offensive line struggling a lot, which was a big concern. How good would that offensive line be? As of now, though, I think I will take the Vegas Raiders to beat the Cardinals. I was not impressed by the Cardinals one bit. And I think they just have another tough offense to go against. I'll take the I'll take the Raiders, not in huge, not in as much of a blowout fashion, but a twenty seven, a twenty seven twenty game. Up next, we got the Bengals going into Dallas. Dallas has so many problems here. Um, first things first, you have no Dak, you have no Tyron Smith, who was out last week. Your offense is gonna look absolutely shambles. But I do like their defense, so I think that will keep them in the game for three quarters of it. But then you realize that Cooper Rush is not the guy. Trade for Jimmy or Teddy Bridgewater. I have a twenty I have a twenty eight I have a twenty eight um eighteen ball game. Eighteen's a weird score, but I want to mix it up. Twenty twenty eight eighteen ball game. Um I feel like they Dallas will actually be able to get a run defense going. I still think Tampa Bay had the best run defense in the league. And I think Zeke actually did decent. Don't judge fantasy. He had five yards to carry and they really just couldn't they just chose not to run the ball, which I thought was incredibly weird. I think Dallas' defense will be able to keep them in it. I I liked what I saw from Trayvon Diggs week one. Micah Parsons is continuing to be Micah Parsons. And that entire defense actually looked good against Tampa Bay. Next, we got the Saints heading into Tampa to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Very, very, very good game. A rivalry. Tampa Bay hates the Saints. They haven't been able to beat them in a regular season game in the Tom Brady era. And I think that continues. I think the, Tam I think the Saints defense... The, I think Tampa Bay has another lack. That's not the correct score. I think Tampa Bay has another kind of lackluster offensive day. They only put up 20 points, and the Sa and the Saints close it out, putting up 28, 28, 28, 20. Saints win. Up next, we got the Carolina Panthers going into New York. Two good, very good running backs when healthy. These are two phenomenal running backs when they are healthy. And I think the Panthers got robbed last week out of a very easy win. Not easy win, but a win that they should have had. And I think the Panthers need to get to hit the gas sooner when it comes to offense. And I think they can. It's going to be a lower scoring game and a close game. Give me the Panthers in a 20-17 to ball game. I'm next, we got the Washington Commanders hosting the Detroit Lions. I think this is going to be another good game for the Commanders and the Lions. The Lions almost... Almost beat Philadelphia and almost made a comeback. You're never going to let the Lions escape from you. You underestimate them. They will beat you. And I think that and I think that continues. I think that Washington is going to win this game. But I think that the Lions will continue to keep it close. In a 31-28 ball game, Washington wins. Carson Wentz looked really good week one. I'm next to get the Rams versus Falcons. I better see a good Rams offense here. Give me the Rams. Give me the Rams 29 13. I better I better see a good Rams offense and a good Rams defense again. Next we have the 49ers, Niners hosting Seahawks. I think the Trey Lance week one game was a bit of a fluke, bad weather conditions. You got to take more into account of it. It wasn't just all that. And was the was the Seahawks win a bit of a fluke? Yes, two fumbles at the goal line, a bad call by Nathaniel Hackett to kick it instead of going for it. He even admitted that they should have went for it. So I think the Niners come off this game pretty comfortably, not 233. 23-10. I think that's a pretty good score. I do still trust the Niners' defense. Up next, we got the Green Bay Packers hosting Chicago Bears. If, if there's something that always remains the same, it's that Aaron Rodgers owns the Chicago Bears, and I think it remains that way. Give me, give me, give me the Aaron Rodgers-led Packers to beat the Bears. Bears, 24... 24 to, you know what? 24 to 10. Yeah, I think that's a good. I think that's a pretty fair score. Okay, to end the week off. We got Monday Night Football between the Eagles and the Vikings. That is going to be a very good game. This is game of the week right here. This game right here. That's your best game of the week. I am gonna take the the Vikings in a close game. I'll say 25, 23. 
It's going to be a really close game. Both both teams look really good week one. Both offenses seem to be clicking, but I think Jay Jettis is slightly going to carry this team. So yeah, these are my week these are my week one NFL standings. I hope you all like, subscribe, and the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.